But first, cancer, it's the illness we probably all fear most. We all know somebody who's had it or someone who's battling it. Over the years, I've reported on countless alternative therapies and cancer quacks who've ripped people off and offered false hope. I guess I'm as sceptical as anybody. Well, six months ago, when we began investigating a remarkable Perth surgeon named Dr John Holt and his radio wave cancer treatment, I was still sceptical. What makes Dr Holt different, I guess, is that he didn't want any publicity. But we kept hearing from patients, and dozens of them, who insist that he has saved their lives when the rest of the medical profession had nothing more to offer. Three weeks to three months. Six months to live. Your life's at stake. The stakes are pretty high. Do you owe your life to Dr Holt? Oh, every day of it. Every day of the last 28 years. There was just no way I could have lived. It was just impossible. It just couldn't have happened. I just started uh, university, so I was a little bit wild, enjoying life. I can't explain what that's like to be told. At 18 in particular, when you're supposed to just begin life, it's like everything had ended. So we frightening. Her, all my brothers were there. I remember when the day that they took her down to take the leg off and I was in the lift with her and she was grabbing my hand saying, Mum, please don't, don't let them do it, please, Mum. I wanted to die that day. Elvina Johnson had a lot of living to do. When she was suddenly told, she also had an aggressive form of bone cancer. But they didn't say it was terminal at that stage, did they? No, no, but just, you know the word and you know, you know, what usually happens. I started chemotherapy, then I had to lose my leg, unfortunately. It wasn't something that we had planned or the oncologist had planned, but my cancer was so severe. Uh, after that, I continued on with chemo again, the heavy duty stuff, uh, which I, and then I relapsed in the lungs while I was under chemo. What, more cancer? Yep, a secondaries in the lungs. It was through both of my lungs, and it was, by that stage, it was pretty terminal. Did they tell you that? Yeah, they, their, their words were that I had a, a, a few months where I could either use experimental chemo more as palliative care or I could spend some time with my family. At 18, Elvina wasn't ready to hang up the guitar. Desperate, quite by chance, she heard about a cancer specialist in Perth, a highly qualified doctor with a highly controversial procedure. But by taking that chance and finding this man, I'm here six years later and feeling better than probably I ever have. Remember when, when we used to work in the garden together? She was a, a skeleton, you know, very, very sick child and a couple of times I thought we were going to lose her. And I believe that Dr Hawk did save her life. Well, somebody certainly saved Sophia. After two brain tumours and a spinal tumour, Sophia's family had almost given up. And what did they say that the, this third tumour, what would do to it? The worst, like really? paralysed. Um, as the tumour would progress to, to increase the size of the spinal cord, it would cut off her lungs, the use would not function anymore, so she would eventually... It wouldn't be able to breathe and so wouldn't be able to breathe, it would okay. kill her. Did they say that they had any cure for that, that they could treat it in Sydney? They couldn't do nothing. Did they give you any sort of time span? Anything from a couple of months to six months at the longest. One doctor said to me, don't even take safe as far as Perth because she won't even make it. Sophie, so be careful, okay? okay? Today, two years after they went to Perth, the only signs that Sophia ever had cancer are the side effects from the massive doses of chemotherapy she was given in Sydney. Charlie Teo, Sophia's doctor and one of the world's preeminent brain surgeons, told her parents to give Dr. Holt a go. I didn't know much about Dr. Holt, uh, but I did know that uh, a few patients of mine had been there and he'd. Uh, He'd help them, so I felt that I should keep an open mind to it, and I said, you know, just try it. So what happened when she came back after treatment from Dr Holt? Well, she came back in a good clinical state, and in fact, uh, her MRI scans showed that those white dots that were getting bigger had disappeared. How do you explain that? Well, uh, it's, it's hard, Ray. I mean, I'd like to say that it was the microwave therapy, and it probably was. The first day I said to Mum that I felt, I felt... Like, I knew how a vegetable felt when it was getting cooked or a french fry. Or a french fry. In layman's terms, what this highly qualified surgeon does, and has been doing for 30 years, is give the patient an injection of a glucose-blocking agent. 
He then shines radio waves into the body at a specific frequency. Dr. Holt doesn't guarantee it will cure every cancer, but it's not expensive and there's no quackery about it. It's not painful and there are no side effects. No side effects. I'm oh, sure when you're in there it's very hot and hot for about half an hour and you get a bit tired for about an hour after, but then we went sightseeing scene for the rest of the afternoons. When I first walked in I thought, well, hold on, where's all the pain? <laughs> I mean, you get a little bit warm and, and you, you get a needle and that's it. So I'm thinking, okay, something's going to happen any second, I'm waiting for it <laughs> and nothing ever did. Now remember, Alvina had what was called a galaxy of tumours. She was riddled with cancer. First her leg, then in quick time, it moved into her lungs and was threatening her heart. That was six years ago. I'm stronger than I think I ever have been. But, uh, but you have had, you had any side effects from the Dr. Holt treatment that you know of? No, no, no. No. Uh, but are there side effects from the chemo? Yeah, the usual side effects that people get with chemo. That um, kidneys, my heart needs to be checked often and... Um, I've lost some hearing in my ears, things like that, just from the actual drugs, but nothing from Dr. Holtz. So who is this mystery medicine man that they're all talking about? Well, his name is Dr. John Holt. He was born in Bristol, England, 80 years ago. He was a boy genius, and he went on to become a surgeon, a radiologist, a gynaecologist, and an obstetrician. He's a member of the Royal Colleges, and he's got 22 medical letters after his name. For more than a decade, he was in charge of WA's main cancer research institute, until the 1970s, when his medical colleagues and the politicians blacklisted him. The doctors took up such an action initially, that they said that the treatment was a, a fake and, and useless. Former WA Labor Premier John Tonkin was the exception. He was Holt's greatest supporter, even though it cost him his job. The new government of Sir Charles Court quickly banned the use of Holt's machine in Perth's public hospital. Still, Tonkin told this program back in 1990, he owed his life to Holt's controversial cancer treatment. There's no doubt whatever in my mind that this is the most advanced form of cancer treatment in the world today. And John Holt has been so badly mauled in the processes. If I'd have been through his experience, I'd have been stark staring mad, I guess, because this man undoubtedly has been deliberately crucified and he didn't deserve it. John Wickham used to be town clerk for the city of Wollongong. John Steinke was the Dean of Commerce at Wollongong University. Old mates and old cancer victims, they owe their lives never to ever, Dr. Holt. For the best part of 20 years, they've been trying to tell their story. My urologist said, I don't know what your man in Perth has, but he obviously has something, because when you went away, you had a thriving tumor, and that's 18 years ago there has never been any sign of reoccurrence. Has no one offered an ear to you, John? No. No. And nobody, as far as I'm concerned, and as far as I can find out, nobody in the last 15 years has talked to John Holt. It's an unproven form of cancer treatment, and it's not uh, part of the armory of orthodox uh, ways of treating cancer in Australia. Clive Deverell was the boss of the WA Cancer Council for 20 years. The terrible irony is that Clive is now also suffering from an incurable cancer. I've seen them all over 20 years of uh, working in this field, uh, from Dr. Milan Brick, who was again had claimed uh, as a genius. But Holt's not a quack. Certainly not. He's a very highly qualified doctor. He's a physician. Uh, he's an expert in uh, radiotherapy and physics. Um, but he still hasn't produced the scientific, scientific evidence. After years of attacks and vilification, with threats of legal action and even deregistration, you'd expect that he might be a bitter and twisted old man. Well, he's not. But if Dr. Holt can do what he and hundreds of his cancer patients say he can do, then why hasn't he been recognised? Well, we don't know the answer to that. What we do know is there's been a long medical and scientific standoff. It's been torrid. Um, we've seen uh, one man being vilified by uh, his peers, um, being persecuted as he saw it by the National Health and Medical Research Council. 